make a proclamation of what we're celebrating when we believe that he is risen. We can sing.
is risen. The tomb is empty. He is risen. That's the good news, beloved. That's the good news. That's why we come together to celebrate this Resurrection Sunday. That's the good news because we serve the one true and living God. He's not a dead God, but he's a God who lives. And because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Because he lives, we can face any adversity. Because he lives, we can face any season, any situation, any circumstance, any trial, any tribulation. Because he lives. He came according to scripture. He died according to scripture. He was buried, but on the third day, he got up according to scripture. Beloved, I'm here to assure you on today, the God that we serve, he lives. He lives. And that's the good news this morning on this Resurrection Sunday. And so we thank you all. We have tuned in for this service on this Resurrection Sunday. And without, uh, without all of the bells and whistles, this is probably the most unusual Resurrection Sunday that I know that I've ever experienced. Uh, but it leaves us with still that which is most important. It leaves us with the gospel. It leaves us with the story of Jesus Christ, the good news of how he came, died, and yet rose again to secure salvation for us. And so on this Resurrection Sunday, we want to share with you the story that has been told of Jesus the Christ. Amen. And so let us begin in the scripture, beloved. We want to go to John chapter 19. John chapter 19. We pray that you're all still practicing, practicing safe behavior uh, during this season. Uh, we pray that all is well with you and your families. Uh, and we... Uh, pray that that on this Easter that we can celebrate all together the resurrection of Jesus Christ. John chapter 19. John chapter 19. Chapter 19. Uh, and when you get to John chapter 19, find your way quickly, beloved, to verse number 28. We'll read verses number 28, 29, and 30. Then we'll see what the Lord has to say on this Resurrection Sunday. Amen. John 19, verse number 28. The Word of God reads like this. He says, After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the Scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar, and put it upon hyssop, and put it to his mouth. When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Beloved, on this Resurrection Sunday, uh, I want to assure you that the grass withered, and the flower thereof fade away, but the word of God shall never, ever, ever pass away. We give him glory. We give him honor, we give him praise on today. And so what we want to talk to you about, <clears throat> what we want to talk to you about on today, beloved, is we want to talk to you about the work that Jesus has done on our behalf. Uh, we talk much about the finished work, but just what is that finished work and what does it represent? What does it mean to you and your salvation? So we want to talk about the finished work on today, the finished work. And so we begin here in the scripture, uh, he says, after this, after this, after this. Uh, the scripture tells us in, the, in another place in the book of Hebrews, Paul puts it this way. He says now that this, that this gospel of Jesus Christ and, and the method and, and the plan and the purpose of God, in the process of him securing this salvation for us all, he says in the word, he says uh, in Hebrew chapter 2, verse number 10, he said, uh, it became, it became, it became him uh, by whom all things are and 
it became him by whom all things are for, uh, that in calling many sons uh, to, to, to this glory, that in calling many sons to glory, that he would, that he would employ this strategy. Uh, that in employing, that in calling many sons to glory, it became him that he would send his son, his only begotten son, that he would be the captain of their salvation. Mm -hmm. It became him. It was befitting. It was appropriate. For the God who sets high yet looks low, it was appropriate. For the God who's been God through every single generation, it was appropriate for the God who was God before anything was. It was appropriate for the God who has not only been the God of our fathers, but of our father's father. For the God who has never, ever, ever failed in one promise, one word of the promises that he has given us as his people. It was befitting, it was befitting that in bringing many sons to glory, that he would first send his son Jesus. to be the captain of our salvation. Jesus. Beloved, this word captain here, in the scripture, the word captain, it means author. It means author. It means the first one. It means the beginning. That's why the scripture tells us that, that Christ now was, he was to be the firstborn among many brethren. Now, we being the many brethren, but but we being the many brethren, we have the benefit of having Jesus Christ be the author of our salvation. And so this Jesus Christ, he said that, that he was to be the captain of our salvation. And as the captain of our salvation, the Bible says that God made him perfect. He made him perfect. And the perfection, beloved, perfection is one of those words where God's perfection is not like our perfection. Uh, because when we think about perfection in many ways, we think about a person who has arrived at an end and there is no more to be done. But in God's perfection, the word that is used here is actually telos. It's telos. It's telos. Uh, and the word telos in the Greek, it actually means now, it means now to arrive at an end goal, to meet an objective. It means that the task that has been given has been accomplished. And so he says, this, this captain shall be the author, and it is God himself who will perfect the task that he has been given. And he declares here, beloved, that he will perfect this task through the suffering of the captain. Through the suffering of the captain, and, and, and this suffering, and this suffering, the, the suffering is the the affliction. It's the affliction. It is it is that thing that that thing that it that is external, but in the affliction, it has afflicted now the person, the the individual, and it brings about a distress. It brings about, in many instances, a pain. It, it brings about a suffering, a suffering, a suffering. This word in the Greek is patimos. It actually means passion, and that's where we get the passion of Christ, the passion of Christ. It is through the passion of Christ that we have been saved. It is through the passion of Christ that salvation has been secured for us. See, see that's why it really is true that, 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 that he was wounded for our transgressions. Yes. Uh, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace is upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. The captain, the captain has been made perfect through his suffering. And through that suffering, Free the Lord. captain has made way for many brethren to enter into his salvation. Jesus. The captain, the captain. And so, beloved, I want to caution you today that you don't look upon Jesus on the cross as being an end of anything. No, yeah. it really is the next step in the process of perfecting yes. our captain so that Jesus. we too can benefit from the salvation. Yes. Yes. It's the next thing. And so as we begin the scripture here in verse number 29 and 28, he says, 
He says, now after this, after this, after this, the word after, beloved, after means the thing that follows the thing that happened before it. And so as he finds himself here on the cross in this, in this gospel of John, he is at a place where uh, he is, he is, this is the thing that happened after the thing that happened before. See, see, that's the thing about, about God and the thing that, that we can enjoy because there was a plan and a purpose for Jesus' life. Mm -hmm. And as he followed after the plan and the purpose that God had given for his life, he transitioned from one thing to the other, mm -hmm. all in an effort to get him to the end of the process. And see, beloved... As we have been given the same purpose and the same promise and the same will of God for our lives, he says there's always going to be an after. And no matter what season you're going through right now, beloved, no matter how bad this season appears to be, you have to know, beloved, that there's always going to be an after. That These are the things that are happening right now, but there's an after coming there's a next season coming uh, that perhaps that's why he declares in his word. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, he says, now for everything, mm -hmm. there is a season. There's a time for every purpose under the heaven. There's a time to be born. Mm -hmm. There's a time to die. Mm -hmm. There's a time to plant. and There's a time to pl pluck up that which was planted. There's a time to heal and a time to heal. There's, there's a time to break down. There's a time to build up again. There's, there's a time to weep and there's a time to, to laugh. And there's a time to, to mourn. And there's a time to dance. I'm, I'm here to tell you, beloved, no matter what the season is right now, uh, each, each season has its own time. It yeah. has its own time has its own time. And the things that happen in that season, they have purpose. They have purpose. That's why the scripture says that, that we who belong to God, we who are, we who love God and are the called according to his purpose. It doesn't matter what season we're in, uh, each season has purpose in our lives. And so no matter what the season is, the things that happen in that season are all working together yes. for the good of them who love God and who are the called according to his purpose. And he reminds us here in Ecclesiastes of one other thing about all of those things that happen under the heaven. He says they all have an expiration date. Jesus. Beloved, I'm here to remind you, no matter what your season is, I'm here to tell you today, this too shall Come on, pass. Yeah, there, that. there is an after. There, yes. No matter what's going on today, this too shall yes. pass. There is an after there's a season for this coronavirus, but but when this season is over with, there is an after this coronavirus has an expiration date, and when this season is over with, there is an after there is a tomorrow, even though it does not look like it, there is an after. Yes, and so, as the captain finds himself here on the cross, he says that after this. After the thing that happened before, after the time that has transpired before, after the thing that took place before, he says, after this, Jesus knowing that all things are now accomplished, mm -hmm. that all things are now accomplished. Mm -hmm. uh, before we get to the things, beloved, let's get to the thing now that is most important to us as the people of God, because the scripture said, we are empowered by the things that we know. See, we, see, we're not empowered by the things that we heard about. We're, yeah. we're not empowered by the thing that your neighbor knows. No, you're empowered by the thing that you know. And the scripture says here that after this, Jesus knowing, Jesus knowing, knowing, knowing. And this knowing, beloved, this knowing, this is an intuitive knowledge. This this is a knowledge that doesn't always flow hand to hand with reason. And this is an intuitive knowledge. This, this is a perceived knowledge. This is an understood knowledge. This, this is 
This is the knowledge that is seen. This, this is that knowledge where I don't need anybody to agree with me. I just know. I, I don't need it to, to, I don't need one and one to equal two. I, I just know. I, I just know. Jesus knowing. And because Jesus knew, Jesus knows the plan of God. Jesus knows his role in that plan. Jesus knows what his purpose is. Jesus knows all of the things that have transpired up until this point, and he knows that all things are now accomplished. What, well, what does that mean? He knows that everything that needed to happen before this time has already happened, and it has brought him to his now. See, beloved, don't try to get to your now and then try to make up for the things that you know you should have done yesterday. No, it was the things that you should have done yesterday that would have propelled you into your now. So that now as you have arrived at this place, you are prepared because every single thing that God has given me to do has brought me to this now. So beloved, beloved brother Paul puts it, puts it best uh, he says, he says in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 7, he declares it this way. He says, I fought a good fight. Uh -huh. He says, I finished my course and I kept the faith. He said, he said this, this word accomplishment, beloved, it is from the root word, here we go again, telos. Uh -huh. It means to accomplish. It means to finish. It means to come to the end of a process. It means that another task has yet been checked off huh. and fulfilled. It means now, of course, Brother Paul said, I fought a good fight. Uh -huh. I finished my course. I've kept the faith, but still there is much to be done. But everything that needed to be done up until this point, it has already been done. And so as the captain finds himself on the cross, Every single thing that needed to be done, everything has been fulfilled. Uh -huh. And it had brought him to his now. To uh -huh. his now. And so and so and so so beloved, before we move on, we, we, we need to we need to also understand this thing about the knowing and the knowing, the knowing being an intuitive knowledge. Uh, there's something different about this kind of knowledge. Uh, because this knowledge is is not is not just a thought, it's not just a piece of information, uh, but it is a mindset. Hmm. It is a mindset. It is a it, it, it and this mindset has has produced in him a state of being. Jesus. There's a state of mind behind his state of being, and because of his state of mind, his state of being is one who is quite willing to do all the things that are necessary so that the purpose of God for his life might be fulfilled. Hmm. Hmm. Perhaps that's why the scripture tells us that, that we should, we should, if we're going to fulfill God's purpose for our lives, that we should let this mind also be in us Amen. that was in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. But he made himself of no reputation. He gave up his title. He gave up his position. He made himself of no reputation and took on the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. And being found in the fashion of man, he humbled himself and he became obedient unto death, even unto the death of the cross. And so just like for the Paul and his now, he can honestly say, I have fought the good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. What's next? Huh. So now he, he declares here, having arrived at this place, he says now he knows everything has been accomplished up until this point. But he says there are still things that remain. See, see, beloved, the one thing about the purpose of God, the will of God, and the plan of God it always has to line up with God's word. And so even though everything had been finished up to this now, the word of God was still not finished. Yes. And so that the scriptures might be fulfilled, yes, the Bible says he's declared, I thirst. Uh -huh. I thirst. See, the scriptures have to be fulfilled. Why? Because in God, with God, God speaking is God doing. 
God now has secured this salvation for us, but he declares also in his word that our hope and our confident expectation needs to be in his word. So our, our, his word has to be fulfilled before the work is actually complete. And so he says, now the things have been accomplished up to my now, but there is still things to be done that are a part of his word, and so that the word might also be fulfilled. And here we go again, back to that word telos. Uh, the word here is teleos. It, 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 it is now that which is complete. It brings you to the end of a process. It is the completion of a task. It is the fulfillment of the same. And so now, now that everything has been accomplished up until this point, now let us allow, allow for the word of God to be fulfilled. Hmm. And so in the scripture, the scripture now tells us in the Old Testament, mm -hmm. this now had already been prophesied. Uh -huh. In Psalm 69 and 21, he said, he says now that they gave him also gall for his meat. Mm -hmm. and, and, and in his thirst, they gave him vinegar mm -hmm. to drink. And so, and so now that he's arrived at his now, let's, let's look to see that the word of God that had been prophesied is actually coming to pass yeah. in his now. Matthew 27 and 34 declares it this way. He says that, that they gave him vinegar in response to his declaration of thirst. They gave him vinegar to drink, which was mingled with gall. Uh -huh. And when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink it. Uh -huh. Now, 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 beloved, there's a couple things that you need to understand about this because, because number one, number one, it is the fulfillment of the prophecy uh, that this would happen, and if God said it, it shall come to pass. And so, so there is also not just confirmation, but there is an assurance that whatever you've heard from God, it shall come to pass. God, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. If you have God's word, you have God's will. Yes. God will not go back on his word. Amen. And so that his word might be fulfilled, he <laughs> says now, the vinegar was offered unto him at, the requ at, at his declaring his thirst. Uh -huh. So watch in, 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 in Matthew 27, he said, but, but, but instead of giving them gold for meat, and then vinegar in his thirst, he said, they mixed the two of them together. And, and he says, now, there was a vessel that was set a vessel full of vinegar. And, 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 and they filled the sponge with vinegar and put it to hyssop and then put it to his mouth. See, they, 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 gave, him, they gave him gall mixed with vinegar and they gave it to him to drink. Here's the next thing you need to understand about, about this. See, because the, the thing you have to understand about the will of God is it doesn't always line up with fact, and it doesn't always line up with what the world perceives it to be. He said, I thirst. And, 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 and I'm sure they did not know <clears throat> what it was that, that was actually happening, uh -huh. <clears throat> but they gave him what they wanted him to have. Uh -huh. And so the thing that you need to understand about this mixture is gall was a poppy plant, mm -hmm. and, and there was an extract that was, that was taken from the poppy plant, and the extract that was taken from the poppy plant was an hallucinogenic called opium. Uh -huh. And the opium now mixed with the vinegar uh -huh. would be an anesthesia for yeah. him. So that now if he no. took of it, it would now medicate no. him yes. to the extent to where he did not feel any pain, yes. nor would he know no. what was going on. Yes. That's why the Bible tells us, beloved, that we should be sober yes. so that we do not be, no. become no. intoxicated yes. with the things of the world, with the will of the world, because the world is always trying to get you into a place of a stupor yes. in your mind yes. so that you cannot stay focused on the will and yes. the purpose yes. of God. Yes. He said they tried to get him not to 
to, 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 to cover up his pain, but he said, no, I got to go to my pain. He tried to get him to forget about the thing that God had said about him, but he said, no, I'm not running away from God's purpose for my life. I'm running to God's purpose for my life, and I want to be alert. I want to be clear. I want to I want to fulfill the purposes and the plan of God to the letter. I cannot allow myself to be intoxicated with what the world wants to give me. See, beloved, we cannot allow ourselves to always want to take the easy way. Right? Because sometimes for us to fulfill the purpose and the will of God, we've got to do the thing that nobody else wants to do. In fact, as our captain now found himself on the cross, he found himself on the cross to do the thing nobody else wants to do. He found himself on the cross to do the thing that nobody else could do. He found himself on the cross to do the thing for you that you could not do for yourself. And so he said, the Bible says, he refused the drink. He refused to drink. He refused to drink it. But now why says, uh, because not only did they want to give him what they wanted him to have, but but in their response to his declaration that he was thirsty, they got it all wrong. See, because what they didn't understand uh, that he has declared in the scripture, he says, I don't want the gall that you're giving me for meat. He said, because my meat, huh, 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 my meat is to do the will of God yes. and to finish the work that he has given me to yes. do. That's my meat. And he said, and when I made the declaration that I'm thirsty, you have to know I'm not thirsty for anything that the world can give me. Jesus. The thirst now is a desire for. It's a longing for. I'm thirsty. I'm, I'm, I'm thirsty for, for relief. I'm thirsty for deliverance. I'm thirsty for the power of God. I'm thirsty for the things of God. He declares here, he says, I'm thirsty, but this is a thirst that you don't seem to understand. Uh, but perhaps the psalmist puts it best in Psalms chapter 42, verses number one and two. He, he declares it this way. He says, he says, he said, as the deer uh -huh. panted for after the water brooks, he says, so do I pant after thee, O God. He said, my, 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 my body my body is parts, but 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 I but but I'm, I'm I'm at the place in this process where I'm no longer concerned about my body. He said, my soul oh, is thirsty. Yes, God. He said, I'm I'm no longer concerned about yes, God. about submitting to the needs of my flesh. He said, no, my soul is thirsty, and my soul is thirsty for God, and, and and not just any God. He said, my soul is thirsty for the living God. When shall I come and appear before you? He said, my meat is to finish your work. And now that I've arrived at this place, that the work is coming to an end, my soul is desiring. My soul is craving. My soul is thirsting to be with you, yes. oh God. He said, that's, that's what I'm thirsting for. My soul is thirsty for God. My soul is thirsty for God. And so the scripture says, in Matthew, he says, so when he tasted this concoction, when he had tasted thereof, he said he would not drink. And so as we move to verse number 30 here in the text, he says, so after he had received of this concoction that they had tried to give him in response to his thirst, he says, after this, he declares, it is finished. Yes, and he bowed his head and he gave up the ghost. Beloved, I can, I can, I can think of, of no, no, no more familiar yet or powerful words to hear. It is, it is reaffirming to the believer to know that it, is finished. It is reaffirming to the believer in a season such as this that the captain was given an assignment 
and that the captain didn't give up on his assignment, but the captain endured the suffering. The captain endured the pain. The captain refused the, the world's desire to give him something to mask the pain or to turn him away from his purpose altogether. The captain refused. And because the captain refused, God has perfected the captain Jesus. and the captain now has made a way for the many brethren. I, I, and, 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 so, and so here he declares these words, it is finished. Now, 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 but, 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 but understand this, beloved. He's not talking to those gathered around the cross. It is finished. He's not talking to his mother, his sister, his brother. It is finished. He's, he's not just speaking something to be heard by, by those around him. He's not speaking even to, 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 to convince himself. No, he declares it is finished. I want you to know something about, about this because it is finished. These three words in the Greek is one word. We get back to the root once again, this word talos, which actually means to accomplish, to finish, to come to the end of the process. These three words, beloved, the, the word is tetelestai. It was these three words that the serve when he had finished the work that the master had given him to perform. Uh -huh. When the work was complete, when the task was fulfilled, when the objective was met, the servant would return to the master and he would utter these words, it is finished. And, and, and it, was not, it was not just a task to be finished that day, no. No, it's finished. Uh, it remains finished. And it shall be finished Jesus. forever. That's why in Hebrew chapter 10, verse number 4, he declares it this way. He says, so with this one offering, he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. Well, wait a minute now. He said God perfected the captain through his suffering. And now he declares, now the captain, as he has been perfected by his offering, he has also perfected those who are being sanctified. Now, now, now wait a minute. Who, who, who is that? Here's the good news. Who is, who is that? Uh, for, for those who have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, he says, that's you, the, the one who has been sanctified the one who is being sanctified. He, he is being sanctified. He said, you, you've been perfected, but you are being yeah. sanctified. So, so you, you have not reached that ultimate end yet, but you are being sanctified. But, but so that now we can help you along the way so that the enemy can come against you. I have perfected you. So, so that we can help you along the way that the enemy can't come against you. I have saved you. So that you can, you can have some help along the way that the enemy cannot stop your progress. I have delivered you. He said he has made you perfect. He has finished you. Oh, praise God. Huh. Bless your name, Jesus. He has finished you. You have finished work, beloved. He finished his work, and as he has finished his work, he has finished you. The Bible says, mark the perfect man. Mark the perfect man. Because the end of that man is peace. Beloved, this is the season, this is the time that to fulfill the purposes of God, the world needs to mark the perfect men and women of God. Yes. Because ours is a perfect ending. Ours is always going to end in a place of peace. They need to mark the perfect man. And this season, they need to mark the perfect man. And so as he bowed his head 
and gave up the ghost. And John 17 says, he declares also to his God. He says, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work that you gave me to do. And now, O oh God, glorify thy me with thine own self to the glory that I had Amen. even before the world began. I have finished my work. My purpose and my work here on earth is done. Those who have believed in me have been made perfect by my perfect work. And just as I return to the Father, mm -hmm. I will, the Father will send unto you a comforter mm -hmm. so that you don't have to thirst like I do. Because he says, if you refuse the water that the world wants to give you, as he told the woman at the well, he says in John chapter 4, he says, he says, whosoever shall drink of the water that I shall give him, he shall never thirst again. Yes, sir. Because the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water that springs up into oh, Jesus, eternal Jesus. life. Jesus, Jesus. Beloved, he came. Beloved, he died. Beloved, he was buried. But on the third day, he got up. Yes, he finished the work. Yes, and the Bible says that he has now ascended to sit at the right hand of the Father. And now that you too have been finished by the work of the captain, he says, this captain, he not only authored your faith, but he finished your faith. And so when you find yourself in those times where your faith appears to be failing you in any way, he said, don't look to the world to offer any solutions. Yes. But he says, look to the author and the finisher of your faith. Yes. Look to him. Look to the one who has secured your faith and now sits at the right hand of the throne of God hmm. in a seating on your behalf. Thank you, Jesus. And I can hear right now, I can hear him declaring, uh, uh, I know I know they made some mistakes along the way, but they are finished work. I, I know that they, they've stumbled sometimes along the way, but they are finished work. I know that they can't see even now that because of the finished work, all things are already under their feet. Jesus. But they will come to that place and they will adopt that mindset. And they will adopt that state of being. And when they adopt that state of being, everything that appears before them will just be that which is in line with the next thing that needs to be done Jesus. in the sanctification process until I get to go. Jesus. Bless your name, Lord God. Ah. That's the mindset of the believer. All things are working for me. Yeah. God is still in control. Yes. Yeah. God is still in charge. Every promise in Christ Jesus is yea and amen. I've been sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. The enemy has no power over me. Neither can he do anything to me. I'm finished. In Jesus' name. Beloved, we thank you today on this Resurrection Sunday. You have tuned in with us that the word of God might go forward. And so we pray for all of you who are listening on either of the formats that we have chosen to send out the word on today. We pray that you're all well. We pray that you're all adhering to the guidance that's been given. It's, 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 not, a, it's not a show of weakness for us as the people of God. No, we as the people of God, uh, we serve a God who is a God of order. Jesus. So. And so we're okay in this season because we know that this season too has purpose. Yes, because when we come out of this season, beloved, things will never be the same. Jesus. This should be the time in our self-isolation mm. that we grow closer yes. to the captain of our salvation. Yes, Jesus. That he may 
assure us and reassure us and confirm in us once again that we are finished work. And it is the result of the work that the captain did as he went before me, the firstborn among many brothers. Thank you, Lord, today. Thank you for your people. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your long suffering. We plead the blood of Jesus Christ as a hedge of protection around them and over them, O oh God, knowing that whatever fear and anxiety that has been thrust upon us in this season, Lord God, we know that it is not of you. Yes, Lord. Because you declared in your word, I did not give you that spirit of fear, but I gave you a spirit that will firmly equip you in every single thing that I've given you to do, you. that will equip you in all of those things that are godly, and that will equip you in how to live the above life. He said, and those things came by way of my spirit, and it's a spirit of power. It's a spirit of love. It's a spirit of Thank a sound, God. saved mind. God bless you today, beloved. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Yes, Lord.